Hi lovelies and welcome to the Witch's Cookery and a happy Beltane to you! In today's witch vlog I'm taking you through my Beltane or how we call it in Germany Walpurgisnacht celebration. I want to give you some inspiration on how to celebrate Beltane or Beltner, give you ideas for simple Beltane rituals and seasonal witchery, teach you more about their pagan customs and origins that are still very much alive here in southern Germany, include a little bit of spring and Walpurgisnacht lore and and of course do a themed kitchen witchery for you so you can too cook a Beltane feast for you or your loved ones. But first we shall head out, soak up those sunny energies, smell the spring flowers and frolic in the fields. Vamonos! <laughs> first day of spring and I just want to sing to everything that's moving, every single little thing To them birds flying free Fish in the sea Flowers and trees Every little bumblebee I wanna sing What exactly is Beltane all about? It mainly has two components, warding, protecting and fertility. English, Irish, French and many other languages. The day is known as Beltane, Beltana or some form of that word. And it's believed that the origin of this lies in Old Irish, Belotenia, meaning bright fires. Which would make a lot of sense because traditionally the day in Middle and Northern Europe is celebrated with a lot of big bonfires. And it's important to know that back in the days people believed that fire and smoke had a cleansing type of energy or power to it to cast away evil, sickness, all that bad stuff. At certain points in a rural year those big cleansing bonfires would be lit and Beltane is one of those main holidays. There were also certain herbs tossed into the fire or a certain wood used to give it a little bit more of that magical touch and a lot of times two bonfires were built across from each other and then people would drive the cattle through to rid it from illness, from sickness. Couples would run through it with a wish for fertility and health. To this day the traditional jump over the Beltane fire is still part of culture. Different European countries celebrate the night from the 30th of April into the 1st of May. In Germany we know it as Walpurgisnacht or Tanz in the Mai, which is the big celebration and then on the 1st we have May Day. But why is it called Walpurgisnacht? Obviously all those fun customs and traditions for the day stem from old pagan customs and rural beliefs and with the Christianization the church had to kind of find a similar type of holiday that would allow people to still celebrate their customs, their traditions, but also please the the big boss, mainly also the church to kind of control it a little bit more. Give it a nice white coat of Christianity. So they took the Catholic Saint Walpurga, which lived around 870 and came from the south of England to a lovely Bavaria to convert the people there to Christianity and made it her saint day her holiday. Saint Walpurga, who then also worked and lived in a monastery in Heidesheim, is said to have those healing powers. Allegedly she cured a rabbit dog, she saved women in childbed from fever, miraculously stopped a child from starving with three cornrows, ancient symbol of the Germanic field and farm goddess, cured sick people and so on. So basically she's the patron saint of farmers, good harvest, fertility, mothers and anything else related to illness for people or livestock. Conveniently matching exactly what Beltane is about. Taking the place of that patroness, goddess, force, energy of that day. Now, if the idea of chasing Milo and Rex through the burning gates of a private Walpurgisnacht hellfire in your backyard might seem a bit disruptive to your neighbors, of course you can scale it down to. For example, by making a simple Beltane candle in the privacy of your own four walls and having a lovely little cleansing and warding ritual there. Personally, I love to include some seasonal botanicals and that has tradition too, as there are certain herbs that are customary use 
podcast for the day. I already introduced you to some in last year's vlog, but especially when we are talking about chasing the evil away, there are some more that were either burned in the fire or hung on doors or from the roof for protection. Both valerian and wild oregano was rumored to have a repulsive smell to any witch. Very true in my case, valerian smells absolutely like cat piss. So they were hung over stable doors to hinder the witches from hexing the livestock. It was also custom to sprinkle blessed salt on all the door stoops and windows and you can find more about this in my cleansing vlog. And the brooms were placed everywhere with the bristles pointing up or laid flat on the floor so the evil spirits would get caught in them or trip <laughs> so they couldn't cross. To make sure that you had no bad spirited creature crawling through your door or spying on you, the keyholes were blocked with a knife and young men would walk through the streets making loud sounds with whips and bells. This is actually a custom that is still done to this day. For the modern witch I do recommend obnoxiously loud music to get rid of the evil neighbors that hindered your wild Wapugs nach backyard plans before. No, but for real, maybe play some lovely tunes, your singing bowl or hang those wind chimes for a sound bath and visualize a protective flight surrounding you, your home and loved ones. Simple yet traditional and a wonderful way to honor the spirit of the day in a pagan connected way. So here in southern Germany for the celebration Walpurgisnacht you still find those big cleansing fires. But there is also another tradition, the Freinacht. People believe that it was very important that on the day of Beltane really everything was in order. So that the evil spirits that made people sick or that ruined the crops or whatever could not hide anywhere in any nooks or crannies. So you were supposed to have a really clean house and a really clean farm. And an old, old custom from back in the past pagan days that carried on to today is that during Walpurgisnacht the young men of the village will go around at night and see if someone maybe has left machinery out in their yard or back then maybe the hay wagon was still there and not in a shed where it should be so they would take it apart and then carry it to the center of the town where the maypole is erected and left it there for everyone to see. Shame! Shame! Nowadays people just play pranks on each other. That custom got a little bit out of hand, especially in the cities. And annually the police in Munich twitters to the people to please behave. Because it's a crazy night fueled by too much alcohol. But in the villages it's pretty wholesome. If you might have heard of Walpurgisnacht in combination with like witches or witch night. There are actually two explanations for that. Well first of all people back in the days believed that sickness, illness, a bad harvest was caused by, by witches, by evil spirits. So it has nothing to do with modern day witchcraft. Um, so they just wanted to chase those mythical beings away. Another one is that one of the most influential German writers back in the day, Goethe, wrote Faust and wrote this entire story about the Walpurgisnacht and the Blocksberg, where the witches have their Sabbath, but that's a much um, more recent story, so to say, that doesn't go back to pagan times. But of course this idea of an untamed, ecstatic, sexual pagan gathering that inspired the story did likely come from the fertility rites and customs celebrated back in the days in order to bless people and fields with the fertile Beltane energies. From scooting over big stones without your knickers on to sowing your seed on the bare fields, pun intended, there was lots of uninhibited merriment going on. Didn't quite make it into Christian tradition in that raw form, but there are still traces of it in today's customs. For example, the election of the May Queen and the auctioning off of the young women to the single man to be their companion during the village festivities during the coming year. Now, also interesting fact, before the invention of the anti-conception pill, most babies in Central Europe were born in February. Hence, they were likely conceived in May, inspired by those crazy spring feelings. Not gonna lie, my hormones definitely come out to play more when the days get sunnier. And I have that one friend that annually keeps reinstalling tinder in april anyways here in the villages and little towns we still celebrate with a maypole and a lot of super fun traditions around it that i talked about in last year's beltane vlog and in the cities every club will run big tents in in my parties where people will engage in uh, what one engages typically in after one too many drinks and liberated dancing 
In order to honor the reawakening fertility, I like to do a bit of kitchen witchery with the first early greens, chock full of vitamins, color and sun energy. Today a beautiful green spinach and lemon cake adorned with flowers and a white chocolate ganache. Sounds weird, tastes delicious. What else make for a great strengthening snack after blessing the earth with a more pagan way of uh, ritual? Just don't let the farmer catch you, could get expensive or at least uh, very awkward. And uh, when decorating our Beltane cake, we can also implement some old timey green witchcraft and lore after having a wonderful spring walk outside. It is said that binding a wreath from daisies would bring you fertility. And for the same reason, women would also gather the blooming hawthorn during Valpurgis. By the way, every time you see me witching in the kitchen, you will find the recipe either on Instagram or under the video description. And for my lovely patrons, this month I have a full Beltane menu with recipes waiting for you to download. Oh, I can't wait to dig into this later on. Another really important element for the day next to fire was water and that had two functions. First of all, it was also cleansing, but it was also life-giving, fertility awaking. Here in southern Germany, we do, for example, still have the tradition of the Osterbrunnen. Every village has at least one communal well, which was back in the days the source where people got their water from. It was not conveniently flowing out of your tap. And a week before Easter, which traditionally falls somewhere between Ostara and Beltane, that well would be swept with besoms by the man of the village and really cleaned, cleansed and scrubbed. Makes a lot of sense too. You want to keep the source where you actually get your water clean so any type of sickness, illness doesn't really have a chance to get to you. After that was done, the women of the village are coming in and they're decorated with all sorts of fertility symbols like fresh greens that will be draped into a crown-like shape, colored eggs, little ribbons, flowers, everything that symbolizes the reawakening life. Now from historical documents we can only really prove that type of custom until 1900. However, seeing of course the Germanic influence in this area, it likely has a much older origin in pagan tradition. Speculative, huh? No facts. Now in Germanic beliefs, wells, springs, sources, bodies of water were considered holy. They were considered the living place of spirits, the living place of gods, goddesses, and especially the well was usually the portal to the most important goddess in the Germanic pantheon, Frau Holle. So in a lot of the old German folk stories, you will also have that repetitive pattern of someone falling into a well and getting into the other world or voices speaking from a well. People finding wisdom there or help or whatever they need. Later with the Christianization those Easter wells were also very important again for this warding and cleansing aspect. Easter was traditionally also a time to Christian. The Osterwasser was fetched from the wells and said to have that special life-giving power. The Christianing in itself at least in the Catholic context is also a cleansing ritual because the person who gets Christian is cleansed from the original sin. So again here we see a big overlap of those different beliefs and customs and traditions. In the very morning of May Day or Beltane it's also a tradition to go to a spring and fetch some fresh water to clean and cleanse your house with and there are a lot more fun and naughty little customs and traditions that I mentioned in my last year's Beltane vlog that you can check out including a lovely bit of Beltane themed cottage witchery for eternal youth and beauty. But of course, many of you might not be living surrounded by nature, so water fetching, wild foraging and ferocious frolicking could be out of the question for you when celebrating Beltane as a modern day witch. And due to the day here turning into the most uninspiring ugly grey soup, we decided to celebrate with some cozy low-key ideas at home too. We brought some flowers in to feel the spring spirit, replaced the bonfire with candles, made some music, well to be fair it was more noise than anything anything else, infused sugar with violets from the garden for later use and some sexy kitchen witchery, made herbal water for those revitalizing energies and enjoyed our delicious wild cake. By the way, a lovely and connected way to celebrate any of the holidays is to get some seasonal fruit, veg or herbs from your local market and witch it up in a kitchen. And that was it. Of course I will be celebrating Walpurgisnacht twice this year as my first witch retreat Wicked Walpurgisnacht is coming up in only three days. I can't wait. Wishing you a magical Beltane and a beautiful spring celebration. Goodbye!